Yoga Sutra has 196 verses. And the first verse begins with, now begins the instruction. So this is the first verse. Second verse we will talk about what is yoga. The first verse is introduction to yoga. Now complete instructions regarding yoga. This is the first sutra. First sutra of a text called Yoga Sutras compiled by Rishi Patanjali. Normally we like to be instructed, correct? We like it so much that we want to be instructors. <laughs> We like to be instructed and it feels so good to be instructed that we want to be instructors. Is it true? We want to be instructors because sometimes we feel that the instructions that we have received in our lives may not be very uh, cheerful. So because of that experience or maybe not having experienced a better state of instruction. Therefore, many individuals go into the art of learning or wanting to learn many aspects of self-development. This is the reason why human resource training, self-development training, self-improvement trainings are very sought after. Why is it just now? But this has been happening for thousands of years. The practice of yoga is to attain clarity in instructions. And these instructions is not external instructions. These are internal instructions. The art of yoga is to instruct oneself. Because to get the external instructions to the quality of what we want may not be found, not be found ever. So, have you ever been satisfied with anything that we have achieved externally until now? Maybe, but very rare this occurs. And then, whenever we have instructions or when we read any articles or book, it feels very nice at that moment. Sometimes we feel that we have read that article or book which completes everything that we have ever wanted in our life, but it is short-lived. We will again go and be inspired by another article or another book or another level of instructions. In the Philosophy of yoga, it talks about, it yearns self-realization. And this self-realization, you and I know as practitioners of yoga, is not theoretical, it's not theory. It is experiential. Everything about yoga is experiencing. Is it an experience? Is it an experience of imagining or an experience of participating in a technique. It is participating in a technique. When we participate in a technique, we gain an experience. Right? So that experience allows us to gain an inner instruction. So this particular sutra, which seems to be very simple, now begins the instruction, is the beginning of the step or journey towards self-realization. Every single instruction that we give ourselves, that we filter into our own selves, need to be just to work on self-realization. There is nothing more joyful than understanding oneself. Nothing can come close to the pleasure of understanding oneself. Can you imagine waking up one day, one morning and seeing that completely you understand yourself? No more confusion is so clear that you understand yourself. I'm not talking about that when someone asks you quantum mechanics or biology, you can give them the answer. I'm not talking about that. I'm not asking that that morning which you wake up and you feel so clear that someone asks you what is 12 times 10. 
I mean, 12 times 10 is a bit easy. 17 times 12, I mean, that's a bit difficult. So I'm not talking about that. Or thinking that, that clarity or self-realization must make you a genius of all subjects. Mm. That is not what yoga is about. It's much more better than that. It is the sole and single pursuit, one-pointedness of attaining clarity about yourself. And this one, together with this, there is one very famous word, phrase in yoga. Eka, one pointedness. One ray of light is like flashing torchlight. You don't see it penetrating anything, right? But if you if you point a, a laser beam, it can penetrate everything. So that is how the mind is trained in the practice of yoga to collect all the energies in the mind and the body and the breath and directing it to one sole purpose. They have studied this. Who have studied this? The yogis have studied this over a written history of 10,000 years. Harappa and Moha, Mohanjaro, these two, the valley in between India and Pakistan, the particular valley where they have excavated these artifacts, they are five to 10,000 years old. And these this, uh, artifacts which have been uh, unearthed uh, of individuals doing yoga, Sambhavi Mudra, Sambhavi Mudra, Nasikagra Dristi, sitting in the lotus posture, and then symbols of the, the trident, the snake, Kundalini, all of these, the third eye, many of these has been, has been seen in these ancient artifacts. Even in the Egyptian culture, you see the, the, the kings, using the headgear and with the with this the third eye and then the headgear is like the hooded cobra and then this in the pyramid when we sit in lotus posture it is the pyramid shape all of this is towards that one pointedness when the mind is managed to a state of one pointedness it is a state of clarity nothing else huh? The awareness is not confused one-pointedness, but it is a clear one-pointedness devoid of words. Remember when we were practicing the asanas, I mentioned about intuition. Or was it during yoga nidra? After yoga nidra, I spoke about intuition. And I also mentioned in the beginning of the class, before we started the asanas, I also spoke about how the integration of the mind, body and the breath into that one point of state. All of this indicates that we have this opportunity to train the body and mind and the breath without any <coughs> fluctuations of thoughts to have this one pointedness and then attain such great clarity. Instructions will come from where? From your intuitive state. That intuitive state which we awaken when we practice asanas or pranayama or kriya, it leads you to the perfection of the asana which is appropriate to yourself. So there is perfection. In the instructions, complete means it's perfect. Right? This word complete is it means perfect. But that perfection is related to intuition. And intuition and perfection here is individualistic. So everyone who is practicing yoga, it is a necessity in the tradition of yoga that everyone finds his or her own path, his or her own answers, his or her own ways. Instructions are given. The teachers are there, the practitioners are there, those who are practicing with are there. But again, in all this oneness, there is a distinct individuality to find 
oneself. So this is what this very important sutra talks about. So we, one of the things that we can start off with is to, to, def, to design our own individual practice which we feel intuitively leads us to the greatest clarity and then continue with that practices. And as those practices change or evolve, we continue with the changes. If other instructions come and you don't feel connected with it, we have all the rights not to accept or listen to that and then continue with this flow. Now, can this be had immediately? Can this intuition or these self-instructions, can it be developed instantaneously? We must always have the highest regard to ourselves in a very realistic state. This highest regard to ourselves in the highest realistic state also means that we may in the beginning and even for a long time still work with others. And this working with others can be from multiple sources. So that opportunity to also be a very complete part of humanity must also be allowed. So though yogis are very dedicated to freedom, this freedom is not a violent freedom. It is a very compassionate freedom. A freedom where I, my sole purpose is to attain complete freedom, but in that pursuit of freedom, I am also bringing as many people into my wavelength, into my process, into my destiny. Because maybe they have forgotten, we are there to remind. So this complete instruction to attain this state of clarity and self-realization is not only for myself, but as many people as possible. So the instructions to myself is highly truthful, compassionate, loving, alive, and to attain freedom. The same is given to others. So this is the sutra which I wanted to, do, to share with you, not teach you. I'm not here to teach you anything. I'm just here to, to share. This is a very, a very important understanding in our lives that in everything that we do, the instructions are in the mode of sharing. Many of you here are instructors. Almost everyone here, 99, 95%, are instructors and the five percent already thinking about being instructed right now please so, so with, with that so so this this journey which we are about to begin with to ourselves and others has to be with that state of connectivity 